For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Mutabi Hwayani. Today we are at the Mapungubwe Institute of Strategic Reflections to discuss the role of platinum group metals and the opportunities stemming from South Africa's endowment of these strategic resources. What prompted Mr. to conduct this in-depth research into the potential of platinum group metals and the global hydrogen economy in South Africa? The main report that really piqued our interest in uh, this research came out in 2010 and it was uh, commissioned by the Citibank, a US uh, multinational. And it was based on an analysis of uh, global mineral reserves and it found that South Africa was the most well endowed, at least in terms of the wealth of wealth value of its mineral uh, resources. And it attributed 90% of those riches to the country's platinum group metals reserves. It was clear then that one wanted to see how South Africa could translate that uh, value in, into you know, meaningful benefit for the country. So you know, we then set on to, to look at the options throughout the value chain of how the country could uh, maximize the benefits around uh, that endowment. What role do PGMs currently play in South African society and its economy? Okay, so PGM, let's take the automotive sector. The quoting of uh, catalytic converters is responsible or accounts for more than 50% of the foreign exchange uh, income or revenues from the automotive uh, components. Now that's a lot of money coming from basically our competency in uh, supplying catalytic converter markets. We account for about 15 percent of the catalytic converter industry globally. So one in seven cars around the road would have been uh, supplied with a catalytic converter that's been uh, coated in, in South Africa with platinum group metals. That's just the main, but uh, there are many other supporting industries around that cluster, you know, that uh, create jobs. And so it, it's, it's playing a very crucial role in, in terms of uh, income from, you know, the sector. What does the study tell us about how South Africa could position itself to benefit from the emergence of a so-called hydrogen economy? It, it tells us a, a number of things and mainly they are around the importance to build the necessary competencies to be able to leverage the benefits associated with the transition to the hydrogen economy. So what we found was a number of countries are already doing quite a bit of research, substantially more than South Africa is, at least in terms of the quantum of resources, the people, the level of training um, in, around uh, fuel cells and the hydrogen economy. Uh, people are demonstrating prototypes, you know, fuel cell transportation systems, um, and therefore building the competencies around supporting uh, such um, uh, uh, capabilities. And therefore South Africa would need to position itself accordingly if it were to at least uh, retain its position if you take the catalytic converter industry or supplying 15% of the global uh, autocatalytic markets if you want to retain that uh, level of uh, um, 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 market share, you would need to ramp up your investments in, you know, around fuel cells uh, related technologies. Your research suggests that the knowledge linkages of PGMs are important for extracting the full benefits for South Africa. What are these linkages and how can they be developed? Okay, I'll, I'll start with how the research uh, came up with this uh, argument. And that was uh, based on a patent and general publications analysis. So we looked at databases of uh, general publications, peer-reviewed general publications around uh, platinum group metals inclusive of fuel cells. And so the researchers looked at the top 500 most cited 
uh, research publications on uh, fuel cells technologies. And what you find there is a global map that shows Europe, Asia, and North America. Africa is invisible in that atlas of the knowledge networks. So these would have been authors that cite one another, and it shows the geography of those authors. And you can see that Africa is invisible. And in fact, publications are an indication of uh, knowledge and prospects for innovation and patents as well, prospects for commercialization. And to the extent that Africa doesn't show up uh, significantly at least, it is likely to lose out on the benefits Whereas, in fact, it is most well endowed, you know, with the raw materials. Mm -hmm. You see a scenario where the continent continues to export raw materials, which are value added overseas because we do not have the competencies. And those are the knowledge linkages that really emerge out of this uh, study. Okay. And how can they be developed? Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's about investment in uh, the skills, the necessary skills. It's about investment in the necessary capabilities. You've got to begin tinkering with these uh, devices and technologies. You've got to not just do them in the lab, but take them out into the street and demonstrate the applications and experiment around with them and test the market for them, uh, test the, the ability of our current standards to actually enable the absorption and develop those standards accordingly if that is not the case. So it's all out there. These are long lead activities. So you need to start investing soonest because of course you have to have those people who have uh, went into the maths and sciences, which is already a challenge in, in South Africa. And also ensure that those people get into the engineering uh, careers, at least uh, once they are done with their school, uh, their education, the technicians are necessary. So there's a lot of training that becomes necessary, but also demonstration activities, large-scale projects out there. You also argue that an investment in PGM-related skills and capabilities is not only urgent, but a low-risk investment. Why do you say this? It's, it's certainly urgent because it, it takes time to train someone to become competent, you know, in, in a field. And particularly with these uh, sophisticated uh, technologies, it takes so much uh, longer. You, you then have to make sure that they practice in the industry and therefore have to develop uh, the related market or otherwise people go elsewhere to practice uh, those skills. But um, the, the, the investment is also low risk because the basic sciences and engineering are subjects that are in demand in other industries. There's a lack of uh, such skills and they are therefore translatable you know, to the other industries. Uh, if you are an expert in membranes, which is a component of uh, one of the fuel cells technologies, you can use that competency in, in water treatment technologies because you know the basic science of it. So it's, it's really low risk. You cannot go wrong with investing in, in people and, and those types of capabilities because they are in such high demand, you know, that um, they will, you know, get employable anywhere, you know, in, in the economic sectors. That was Dr. Vela Pimsimang discussing the importance of South Africa fulfilling a responsible role in the stewardship of platinum group metals.